mental illness is one of the disorders that continues to receive a lot of attention. But unfortunately, a lot of people who suffer from mental illness hardly receive the right treatment or they find it difficult to receive the right treatment. Hello and welcome to your health talk show. My name is Trisha. My name is Emma. Mental illness is a health condition. So it's a health condition that affects our thinking, which now in psychology call it cognitive. It affects our emotions. You know, we are all emotional human beings, yeah? So it affects how our emotions uh, play about, yeah? And it also affects our, our, our thinking, which is cognitive, and also our psychological. So the way, it, and it can be a combination of the three. So it is anything that will cause those ones to be imbalanced. Actually, mental illness is like any other disease. It's like malaria, it's like cancer. It's only that uh, it has, the uptake in Kenya especially has not, uh, is not there. So it's, 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 it's treated like, especially culturally, it's treated like a myth. Like, no, sorry, not like a myth, like, a, a, like witchcraft. No, it's a myth that it's witchcraft, yeah? But it's actually a, an illness that affects our mental and our emotional and our cognitive, which is basically thinking. So it's a disease like any other. It is a myth. It is not a death sentence. It's just like saying any other disease is a death sentence. The reason I say that is because it is treatable. We have, you can see, a, depending on what it is, yeah? Mm -hmm. You can see a counselor, you can see a psychiatrist, you can see uh, a, a, a clinical psychologist. So the most important thing is to be aware. So it is not a myth that it is a death sentence. No, it is treatable and one can resume their normal life, normal functioning. Yes, you can, depending on what it is. But uh, as long as the willpower is there, number one, if you're aware, what is it that you're suffering from? And you seek treatment. It is possible to come out of it. But what normally happens, people are in denial. Mm -hmm. So if you are in denial, you don't seek help. Mm -hmm. But if you really are uh, acknowledging the fact that you have an, a mental illness and you have, you have self-drive mm -hmm. and you push yourself and you say, you know what, I can get out of it, everything starts in the mind. So if the mindset of a victim is, 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 is okay, they can pull themselves out of it. So it's possible to get out of it. Okay, is that alone or will you need some type of, you know, like medical intervention or a certain support system to pull yourself out of it? Because I know a lot of the times the treatment that comes out is people with mental illness, they can just snap out of it or pull themselves out of, the, out of it if they wanted to. No, you cannot, okay, of course support, the support system has to be there. Let's say for example, it's in a family setup and maybe your son, your daughter, even your spouse has a mental illness. So if you're able to support them by seeking treatment, going to see a specialist, it's possible to come out of it. Because now you're, you're not walking alone. Mm -hmm. But still, it goes back to the person. Do I want to? It has to start with you, just like counseling. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get calls, oh, I want my son to come for counseling. He's struggling with addiction. And I'm like, is your son willing to come? Because mm -hmm. it has to start with you. Because it's just like, uh, you know, there are those, oh, with all, due respect to all the men in the house, mm -hmm. men don't like going to hospitals, I'm yet to understand, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, if you're given medication and you're not taking it, you're throwing it in the dustbin because you're feeling, as a man, I shouldn't go to hospital. So it's the same thing with mental illness. Mm -hmm. The family may be willing to support you 100%, mm -hmm. but it starts with you. It's not an absolute, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's, just, it's just a support system. Because just as I've said, if, if I give you a lot of love yeah, and a lot of support, but I know that you, because of the mental illness, like for example, it's, if it's schizophrenia or bipolar, your brain chemicals are imbalanced. Mm -hmm. So even if I love you with all the affection, with all the you know, support, and you're not on your medication, and you're not seeing a doctor, it cannot be, it, you cannot get well. So it's not 100%, it's just a support. It, it makes it bearable. Because there's also the, the, the flip side of that, when you have mental illness and your family is not supporting you. So they call you all sorts of names, you know, but they don't understand that you're unwell. So the support system really helps to make it bearable, but it is not 100% uh, for, for cure. 
Okay, I've seen an 11 year old, but it can, most mental illnesses peak at 14 years. But even the small ones are prone. They are prone to, to mental illness, yeah? Mm -hmm. Because one of the causes is genetic. Mm -hmm. So if it is genetic and it starts at an early stage, so even children are prone to mental illness, but there's a... Uh, so actually, when people say children, don't uh, suffer from mental illness, it's not true. It's a lie. They do suffer. Mm. They do suffer from mental illness because I know why people say that. It's because children throw tantrums. Yeah, yeah, they put it as tantrums. Yeah, and... yeah. So it is the responsibility of the caregiver or the parent to see the extent of the tantrums. If it goes on for weeks, and then if they start isolating, if they start behaving in ways that are not normal, you straight away take them to seek help. Yeah, so children are also prone to mental illness, though it's also, it also depends, yeah? If a child, uh, one of the things that, uh, okay, some of the, the three major causes of mental, Ill, mental illness is, is contributed by the environment. For example, a child in an, envir in an environment where it's toxic, like a dysfunctional family, like parents who are using uh, drugs, yeah? So the child can easily get, you know, even children get stressed. They get stressed by the situation of the family. And, and, and basically what you're saying about mental illness, it starts, for the, apart from those ones that are medical, like schizophrenia and, schizophrenia and bipolar, and those ones that are psychotic, yeah, affecting the brain, yeah, there are those ones like depression, which starts, at a, it starts slowly. You get stressed, you get stressed, you don't seek help, so you fall into depression. Mm -hmm. So it can even happen to children. Actually, that's a myth because statistics have shown that one in every 10 young people are prone to mental health or mental illness, mental health issues, which is now mental illness. So, and then when you look at the society right now, most young people have, have so many issues, peer pressure, there's a lot of peer pressure when it comes to education, career and all that. Especially performance, we've been we've been seeing towards the end of the year as they are sitting for their KCP, KCSC. There's a lot of suicide, yeah, and you know suicide is related to mental illness, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is it, they are more prone, especially from. In fact, research has shown that from age 14, they are more prone to getting mental illness. Mm -hmm. That is when it starts showing. If it is genetic, if it is. Uh, Whatever the cause is, if it is substance induced, because sometimes you you take uh, the young people start using drugs and it, it it now triggers the mental illness. You know, sometimes if it is genetic, it stays there, mm -hmm. but when you trigger by using drugs and substance, it now comes out. So teenagers are also more. In fact, the suicide rate for them is even higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are more. They are also prone to mental illness. It's not at an adolescent thing, but you can differentiate adolescence and, and mental illness. Okay. Yeah.